Hello, Dodgen 6th grade band. Today we are going to be working on the Dodgen Daily Dozen. You'll need the following things. The Daily Dozen sheet, which you can get off of the OneNote class notebook in the content library. You will also need a pencil and, of course, your instrument. The Daily Dozen deals with chromatic scales, chromatic notes. That's notes that are right next to each other, can't get any closer. Like on this piano keyboard, here are the notes from our exercise today. You see, I hit every single key in order. I didn't skip any. And going down. Now, let's take a look at the actual music and the notes. All right, the first thing we're going to notice is the key signature. It has one sharp. If you have one sharp, it's always F sharp. You might also notice there are no F sharps in these two lines. Uh, the next thing we see is if you look through, there's a lot of accidentals. There's C sharps and a couple of C naturals. So C sharp is going to be a red flag on this for us. Let's go ahead and circle all these C sharps. Here's one right there and another one there. Now, there's a sharp on this C, then there's another C next to it. Is this natural or sharp? It is actually natural, because this bar line right here, that ends the measure. When the measure is over, that F sharp is no longer in effect. So that's C, or sorry, C sharp. So that C sharp, bar line cancels it out, C natural. So that's a really important rule to remember. Okay, the second line moves a quick bit quicker, so there's more notes to look at. Here's our first C-sharp of this line. And just a moment later, here's the next one. Now this one, since it's within the same measure, they had to put a natural sign here. If they had not put the natural sign, this would be an F-sharp. Uh, sorry, C-sharp. So this is C-sharp, C-natural. And we just continue following the natural sign until the measure's over, meaning that that C there is also C natural. The very next note is C sharp. That same rule uh, goes into effect here. The C is sharp here. That lasts till the end of the measure, and that means that that C right there is still sharp. Let's circle it. The very next note, though, has a natural sign to the left. So that is back to being C natural. So C sharp here, C sharp here, C natural there. Let's put this to the test and name the notes. To be super clear, I'm going to say C natural on all the C naturals and C sharp on all the C sharps. Here we go. One, two, A, go. B, C, C sharp, D, rest. D, C sharp, C natural, B, rest. Stop. All right, not a bad job there on that first line. Now let's look at line B, the next line here. This will be more challenging because it goes twice as fast. Quarter notes are twice as fast as half notes. One, two, letters, go. B, C. C sharp, D, C sharp, C natural, D, C natural, C sharp, D, C sharp, C, B. Rest. Stop. If you can keep up with that, you understand these notes really well. All right, now let's do it on our instruments. This is going to be for the alto sax and also the berry sax. Before you start to play, make sure your reed is nice and wet. You have it perfectly centered and exactly at the tip of the mouthpiece. Hold the saxophone like you're going to play it and double check your neck, neck strap. If it's down here, that's bad news. You want it up where the saxophone pops right into your mouth easily and you can stay nice and straight. All right, let's do the daily dozen. Letter A. One, two, all right?
the letter B, same note, just twice as fast. One, two, ready? <laughs> The saxophone has a lot of really awesome keys all over it, and some of them have special purposes. This piece has a, an opportunity to use what's called an alternate fingering. So if you want to go one step above and beyond and be a real pro on the saxophone, you're going to use this alternate fingering. It's for the note C. And normally the note C is fingered, which is finger number two, right there, finger number two. But the alternate C is to make it really smooth going from B to C. This motion is not great. I'll get where you can see my fingers, but it makes kind of a sloppy sound when you go back and forth real fast. It's kind of loud and fumbly and you can't really go very fast or very smooth. The alternate C lets you do that. It's fingered more like a B. So you put down finger number one on your top hand, then on your right hand, you see how there's three keys along the side of your saxophone? The middle one, you're just gonna hit with the side of your hand, but, you know, so you don't have to move your hand too much. So let me do that B to C back and forth. Let me see if I can keep this all on camera using that side C. <laughs> So you can go really fast and very, very smooth. So if you want to be a real saxophone pro, you'll use that side C on the Daily Dozen. Uh, let's play letter A using the side C. And again, I'll try to keep the, all the keys here on my saxophone on camera. One, two, ready? <laughs> see that and that makes sense to you. Now we have one more thing we're going to try. We're trying some Zoom meetings. We're going to uh, meet with the saxophones later this week. The schedule will be posted along with the link and the codes and all that stuff on Edmodo. So there's two purposes for this. One is if you want a little extra help, a little extra practice, we can do it. And the other is you have an assignment and that is to record yourself playing letter A and B. You can either do that live in front of uh, me on the Zoom meeting, or you can do it in the uh, OneNote class notebook. There's literally a record button. You can just hit a button, record yourself, hit stop, and it's in there for us, for me or Mr. Westfall to check. So one of those things needs to happen by Friday. Hope to see a bunch of you at the Zoom meeting. Hope everyone has a great time practicing the Daily Dozen. I look forward to seeing you soon. Happy practicing. Now, let's look at the tenor sax notes, which are different than alto and berry sax. All right, the first thing we'll want to notice is our key signature. There is nothing there. That means all notes are natural, unless it says something different. As you glance across the piece, you're going to notice a lot of these Fs are marked with a sharp sign, and some are also marked with a natural sign. So the note F is going to be a big concern of ours, a red flag for us to look at. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and circle all the F sharps in the song. The first one is right here. And we keep going over. Oop, here's another one. Now, right next to this F sharp, there's another F. Is it natural or is it sharp? Well, this one is natural. The bar line right here is kind of like a reset switch for any accidentals like this sharp to the left of this note. So sharp here. Bar line is like the reset button, natural here. Okay, let's move on to the second line. And so that's F natural because of the key. This, however, is F sharp. And then right here is yet another F sharp. Now, right after this one, since it's within the same measure, they had to put a natural sign next to this F to show that it, this sharp was done. So F sharp, F natural. And the note stays natural from, from that time to the end of the measure. All right, so that F is natural. Therefore, that F is still natural. Now, in the next measure, we have kind of the opposite thing. There's a sharp right here 
on that F, it's supposed to last to the end of the measure, so it's still in effect when we get over here. So that F right there is an F sharp. Right after that F sharp, the sharp goes away. There's that natural sign that takes away the sharp. F natural there, and it ends on an E. Now to really put this to the test and make sure you understand, let's note name this from the beginning on line A here. Here we go. And, and just to be totally clear, I'm going to try to remember to say F natural on all the F naturals and F sharp on all the F sharps. One, two, ready, say it. E, F, F sharp, G, rest. G, F sharp, F natural, E, rest. Stop. All right, hopefully you got all your F naturals and F sharps right that time. Let's look now at line B. It goes a bit faster, so it might be a little more challenging for you. One, two, no names, go. E, F natural, F sharp, G, F sharp, F natural, E, F natural, F sharp, G, F sharp, F natural, E. Rest. Now, if you just successfully were able to say those letter names in rhythm, you really understand uh, what notes are intended to be played. If you didn't get it right this time, rewind the video a little bit and try it again. Okay, now let's try it on our instruments. I have out my tenor saxophone right here. Uh, let's take a look at letter A, but first, you need to make sure your reed is nice and wet. You have it exactly centered on the mouthpiece. You have the tip mashed up just right. And everything's just so. Make sure when you play, you've you right now check that neck strap. Mine actually is too high. I was just playing alto a minute ago. If it's too high, it's gonna knock you in the nose. If it's too low, you'll be you know your neck will look like this. We don't want that. So nice and straight, where it pops right into your mouth. All right, here is letter A. And one, two, ready. <laughs> idea just twice as fast and a couple of times. Letter B, one, two, ready. And that's basically it. Now, there is a super special fingering. It's called the chromatic F sharp. So if you want to go one step above and beyond and do this the real professional way, you're going to use the chromatic F sharp fingering on this exercise because this is a chromatic scale. Let me show you. All right, we all know that F is fingered one, two, three, four. Well, and F sharp is normally fingered one, two, three, five. There's a special fingering for F sharp that's finger number four. Then you add this little key right here. Mine looks like a little round button. Some of them look a little more elongated. <clears throat> Some saxophones have two keys in this area. It's the one that's down lower. You're going to press it with your what's called your ring finger, the one next to your pinky, but not your pinky. So I'm fingering F, and I'm adding that little key. Let me do that back and forth so you can hear what it sounds like. <laughs> that fingering exists is because you can go very smoothly between those two fingerings. If I did the F sharp normally, I can't get it nearly as smooth. Here's the normal F sharp. Not as fast, not as smooth. So here's letter A, and I'm going to leave it zoomed in on my fingers. We're doing the chromatic F sharp fingering. Be professional and do it that way. Here we go. Letter A. Rest, two, three, four. And 
that's basically it. All right, we're going to plan on having a saxophone Zoom meeting later this week. The schedule will be on Edmodo, and we hope to see you guys there for a little extra help and a little extra practice on this. You have two options for how to turn in this assignment. You can play it for us on the Zoom meeting if there's time, and you also have the option of recording it into the OneNote uh, class notebook. One no class notebook. There's literally a record button. You can record your own sound. Uh, we need to do one of those two things by Friday. Again, hope to see a bunch of you guys on the Zoom meeting and hope to hear everybody playing the Daily Dozen, letter A and B, by Friday. Take care.